In the last tutorial, we talked about the basics of solving a 3D camera using the camera tracker. In this tutorial, we're gonna continue on with that effect, and we're gonna explore how to apply different objects, like null objects, solids, or text layers, to specific tracked planes. And to do this, we're gonna use these colorful tracking points that we see on our screen. Now, I'm gonna use our track city through file. Go ahead and right click on that, and let's make a new composition to match. This is a lovely shot of a drone shot kind of flying through the city. It looks like it could be Detroit, although I've never been to Detroit, and I'm sorry if I've offended people from Detroit. I want to now solve this camera. Same thing as before. We don't have to do any heavy lifting. We can go to Tracker and click on Track Camera. Do that now and let it do its process. Now, as it's going through this, keep in mind that this will take longer depending on the resolution of the clip you're working with, as well as the length. If there's more frames to solve, you can see up there the frame counter is gonna take longer. All right, so it's solved our camera now. If I go through, we see all these little points. I could just all the same create a camera, although I'm not going to this time. This time, I wanna talk about these little crosses. What do these do? Well, these colorful crosses are tracking points. And it's important to know that three tracking points creates what's called a plane, or this red target here. I can even lasso around multiple tracking points and create a singular plane. So what can we do with this? Well, if you hover your mouse over these different tracking points, you'll see that plane change in angle. Choose the one you want and click it, and that selects the three points that make up that plane. And now right-click that plane. We have different options here. We can create text and a camera, create solid and a camera, or we can create null and a camera. I'm not worried about the other settings here. I wanna start by creating text and a camera. And what this is going to do, click on that, is it's gonna create a text layer that is affixed to this plane. And it creates a 3D camera, just as if we had clicked the create camera button, that is now working with this text layer. Check it out. So now no matter what my camera is doing, that text layer is affixed to that plane. It makes it look like it's part of the building. This is a really fun way to do titles or call outs or informational pieces in your shot. I'm gonna double click my T down here and change my text to be population 2.2 million. Detroit is probably bigger, but hey. I'm gonna double click my text layer and come up to my character panel and bring my text size down. This will help it fit a little bit better. There we go. And then I'm going to click on my text layer and I'm going to hit R for rotation. The reason being is because that plane wasn't, wasn't exactly lined up with where I'd want this. It's a little off skew. So I'm just going to change my rotations here to be a bit more in line with what this should look like. That looks pretty good there. Just a little bit of fine tune adjusting. And now, as I move my playhead, that text layer exists in that world, affixed to the plane of that building. I'm going to hit play here. And as the camera gets above it, the text layer gets below it. I mean, check that out. I don't know. That's Motion tracking for me is one of the, the most fun things you can do in After Effects. I get super giddy from this. Now, we're not limited to a single text layer. We've created our camera now. I'm gonna click on Track City Through once more because I can always click on my 3D camera tracker and find a brand new plane. Get out my selection tool to make this work. So I'm gonna come over here to earlier. I'm gonna track the wall of this building here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a new text layer. There it is, double click. Scale this down and click on it, hit R for rotation. I'm gonna change the X rotation to be a bit more straight up and down. Good, and now, just as before, that is now affixed to the building. So we can go through and add as many things as we want to any plane. We just have to re-click our original layer and then click on our camera tracker and go through the same process. Now we have a few more options here. 
if I right click right here, we have create solid and create a null. Now, nulls, as we know from the previous tutorials, are just invisible objects that we can apply data to. And that null object would be really handy because we could just parent things to it and it would track to that particular point. This is handy if you have multiple callouts coming to the same location. We can also, though, create a solid. Why would I want to create a solid? Well, let's go ahead and do it and let's find out. I want to create a solid on this face of kind of this spire object. It's sort of 90 degrees from our population text here, right about here. So go ahead and right click that and select create solid. And that creates a blue square solid affixed to that plane. Now why on earth would we want to create a solid affixed to a plane? Let me show you. Let's pre-compose this. Let's right click our tracked solid and let's hit pre-compose. And you might be thinking, why are we pre-composing this when it's only one layer? Well, track with me, pun intended. Let's click pre-compose. And let's call this square replace. Hit okay. Again, nothing's changed, but we've pre-composed our blue square. Let's double click that pre-comp to crack it open. There we go. As expected, we have our blue solid. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is delete it. I know, it seems weird, but now we have a blank canvas that we can start to create things on. Maybe some of you are, are kinda catching where I'm going with this. If you're not, let's just keep going. Let's come up to composition and let's change the actual composition settings here. It defaults to a square in a motion tracker, I'm not sure why, but let's change this to the full 1920 by 1080 to give us our full aspect ratio. And then let's start to create some new elements in this. I'm going to come over here to my text, click on this, and let's write some, uh, some facts here. Now even though this might not be Detroit, I've went ahead and done some digging to get some true facts of Detroit. At least then I'm not gonna butcher it entirely. I'm gonna go ahead and type those out here. Okay, I'm gonna change the size of this to be a bit smaller using my character panel. Looks kinda cool. I'm gonna create a new box for that text. And then I'm gonna create some shapes around it. And let's have fun with this even further. Let's animate our text using a track mat. I'm gonna add a brand new solid here. I'm gonna apply the track mat. I'm gonna have my text kind of be constrained to the stroke of this pink box. So on my new track mat layer, I'm gonna draw that bounding box. And I'm gonna animate using two position keyframes here. Kind of making this up as I go, so bear with me. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. All right, so I've created now, inside of our original solid composition, I've created a very complex subcomposition with animated text on a track map with different shapes and colors. And now let's come back to our track city through composition and see what happened. Check it out. Because this was a pre-composition, anything inside of that pre-comp is automatically updated here. So I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna change the rotation to match a bit better. Increase the scale a bit. And now, check that out. It animates in and tracks with the camera. This is cool. This gives us full flexibility in the things that we can create using pre-compositions, text, and solids inside of a 3D environment. And all we had to do was click on that track camera button and get our 3D camera tracker on our layer. And it gives us full creative flexibility to create 3D content using real life footage.